beautiful restaurants. Happy Thursday. Let's make today count. I believe in you and I believe in our government. And I know that they will do everything they can to save our beautiful restaurant industry in South Africa. And I need you to do the same today. I'm proudly South African and I know you are too. Let's all stand in solidarity and in unity and save the South African restaurant industry today. A very good morning to you from the Union Buildings of Pretoria. And I'd just like to say to all restaurants today that today as this beautiful day breaks and the sun rises, we have highlighted to government all our hardships, all the tragedy, all the urgency that our industry needs to survive. And what we certainly are asking for has been outlined in a detailed letter requesting the interministerial meetings. We are trusting with our whole hearts that they will hear our pleas and that they will see what is currently happening in the industry. They will feel the desperate measures that is currently taking place. And we certainly have given them all the information, statistics and data they need to make an informed decision to please reopen the liquor and to please lift the curfew. And as this day follows through, what I'd like to really do is ask every South African patron who has ever supported the South African restaurant industry to please come back and love us in the most beautiful way. Today is a day that we need your love more than ever for you to come in and be kind and generous in your spirits as you are South Africans and to bring unity and camaraderie back into the restaurant industry of South Africa. Without your love and support, we will not be celebrating Valentine's Day. And we ask you please to come in today and do what you can. Have a cup of coffee, have a sandwich, have a meal, bring your family, bring your friends, reconnect. Let's be reminded of what it's like to enjoy life once again. Thank you from me, Wendy Albert, CEO of the Restaurant Association of South Africa. Wishing all restaurants a very beautiful day. The Restaurant Association of South Africa this week handed over a memorandum of demands to the office of uh, the president, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa. The association is calling for government to lift the ban on alcohol sales and uh, transportation as well as the curfew times. The association says that the ban has left the industry crippled as most of the revenue comes from alcohol sales. Now to discuss this, we are now joined via Zoom by Restaurant Association of South Africa CEO Wendy Alberts. A very good afternoon to you, uh, Wendy. Uh, thanks for joining us here on SA. ABC News. You staged a three-day sit-in in protest uh, outside the union buildings. You handed over a memorandum of demands to the office of uh, the president. Uh, talk to us about what was contained in that uh, memorandum and uh, what you got out of it. Uh, well, we obviously took to sitting at the union buildings in demand to see the president or to have a cohesive, collaborative inter-ministerial meeting where we could have discussions on the urgency of the industry as well as as well as being able to have the liquor ban lifted and the curfew lifted. We are in a critical state. We are in the last minutes of survival within the restaurant industry, and there really is no time after this weekend to be able to keep our doors open. Yeah. Wendy, the, the, your association has said that the ban of um, alcohol has left the, the, the restaurant uh, industry crippled. How do you respond when people say, well, that's, that's, a, that's a flawed business model because, you know, essentially you're supposed to be in the, in the, in the business of food, of making food, of selling food. Um, why is it that uh, the sale of alcohol, when there are people who are selling alcohols, when there are bottle stores, um, why is it that the sale of alcohol has so badly crippled you? Well, there's a number of reasons. You know, one is the combination of the experience. You know, people want to come out and have food and alcohol pairing at the same time. They want to come into our environment and relax. We're about a relaxed environment where people come to their own away from home. You know, be able to have the um, freedom to be able to choose whether they can consume a glass of wine or a beer uh, responsibly and then also enjoy a meal. And I think that there's also a large miscommunication currently has been put out in the media to say, you know, that restaurants operate like bars. That is not what we're about. We rely heavily on the margin of alcohol sales to bring feed through our doors. Um, and it is the margin that obviously supports the business model in terms of paying the financial output. You know, the margin on food is so minimal um, and it's far more lucrative, obviously, on the alcohol sales. Yeah. Uh, do you know uh, when at the stage uh, or if you've gotten any sort of indication from uh, government in terms of uh, when they will get back to you with regards to your demands? We're just thinking at the moment the biggest issue that uh, government might be dealing with right now is the issue of vaccines. As you would know, there is the arrival uh, of uh, vaccines from uh, India tomorrow. And I'm just wondering if this might be high up, if, if this will make it high up in the agenda of uh, the government. 
But we were certainly hopeful we would have had an announcement today. I mean, I can't how critical it is. You know, we put a, a survey out that the industry will be decimated. Um, a, a 7% of restaurants were imminently closing through this last week. 23% of restaurants wouldn't survive the weekend. And a further 50-odd percent of restaurants wouldn't survive to, to make it to the next month end. That means we'll be left with 11% of restaurants. We certainly have called to South Africa on a huge marketing appeal to say, please, can you help save the restaurant industry? We've done everything we can. We believe government has heard us. We believe that they will certainly take cognizance of the, the, the many contents in the letter, which is certainly an infraction on the restaurant sector at this point in time, but eminently is lifting the alcohol ban and the curfew, which enables us to have a proper dinner time trade. So even this weekend where we've had well support from the public, they're still not in a position to enjoy dinner time trade. So that is also collapsing the industry. Yeah. But as we speak, I've had more and more reports in tonight again of a number of restaurants that have taken to simply close their doors. Their staff cannot come to work. They haven't paid their staff. Staff are not willing to hold through until we get addressed or until government talks to us about the next position. Um, so we are very in, in, in very deep distressed times, very emotional at this point in time to see a beautiful industry that's iconic to the rest of the world to become the most beautiful restaurants for chefs and very emotional to see the destination of currently that's happening and we, we simply have no further answers to yeah. where we're sitting at in our position. I mean, you've kind of painted the picture of what would happen um, should uh, you know you not get uh, help uh, from uh, the government in terms of uh, responding uh, to to your request. Uh, what's the worst case uh, scenario? What 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 would be next uh, in terms of uh, you know the industry and what you would do uh, should you not uh, get the hearing at this point that uh, you are looking for? I'm sure you're aware that uh, many many industries. I mean, just yesterday we were talking about the entertainment industry, who also were were talking about. Uh, their, their struggles. Um, today, even the church industry, in fact, uh, churches are also uh, complaining. So it's not just uh, the, the restaurant industry. So I just wonder, from, from here, what, what's next? Should you not get the, the hearing that you're asking for? You know, it's very concerning that the urgency has in place, been placed on reopening the industry or having the stations to lift the liquor ban and the curfew. You. you know, one would think that there would be enough respect and regard for the industry. You know, without restaurants, there is no culture around South Africa. We have built the culture to be what it is. We are imminent to the landscape of South Africa and providing hearty meals to health workers, to our um, services after hours. We, we are really intrinsic of the lifespan of a South African citizen. And to not give recognition to this at a time like this is really very disturbing. And what's more disturbing is the amount of people who have been put on unpaid layoff and permanent retrenchment. And with every restaurant that closes down, the compounded effect on that exact business, we often call it a village, a restaurant in the village, because in the value chain, we support not only hundreds of people who work in our restaurant, we also support hundreds of entrepreneurs who provide value-added services, your plumbers, your taxi drivers, your transport accommodation. We, have, we do the serviettes, the printing, the graphic design, extraction cleaners, and the list just goes on and on, cookie makers and the sweetie suppliers and all of those people are also impacted heavily by the inability for us to trade. You know, we certainly have, have called to government in a heartfelt approach and we do believe that they've heard us. Why there's a delay in actually talking to us and looking at bringing back economical reprieve back into our industry astounds me. I have no words. I, I've been hopeful all weekend to have had some good notice to be able to put back into the restaurants to keep them. I'm, I'm trying hard on our side to get restaurants to have some degree of faith just to hold on and not lose hope because I believe that the light is just moments away. But we can't do it alone. This is not a relationship that we can have declared just by virtue of begging government to reopen the sector as well as the public to please just do their part to support the industry. Yeah. You know, we do have the court case um, with one of our major stakeholders that um, has been submitted last Tuesday papers are lodged and, you know, whether or not the courts see urgency in it. But the reality is it's too late. You know, that, that is far too late. We've explained how critical it is. Last week, we had 7% of restaurants. This weekend, another 20% of restaurants. In the next two weeks, we're looking at another 40, uh, 40 to 45%, close to 50% of restaurants. And, you know, these are not real factual figures. They have deeper than what we're doing right now because we have outlined, we've gone right to the President of South Africa 
And I believe in President Ramaphosa, the industry believes in him to do the right thing and to reopen our businesses and to reopen the industry and to allow people not to beg to work. You know, it's, it's our human right to work. We shouldn't be on knees begging just to come to work. We shouldn't be on knees just begging to have our businesses saved. You know, at the end of the day, it should be a collaborative discussion that goes far beyond the academic process of everything that we've outlined and truly look at ways that they can support us in, in reopening the sector. All right. Uh, Wendy Albers, thank you very much uh, for speaking to us there. That's the CEO of uh, Restaurant Association of uh, South Africa who staged a uh, sit-in at uh, the union buildings.